Tennessee will hold its first scrimmage. So let's dive into that right now as there are some things that I would like to see out of this scrimmage. There are some, some questions I would like answered. I'm not looking for a lot. This is not the biggest scrimmage of the fall. That will be in about two weeks, and I'll have a light scrimmage to close things out. But I got a couple of questions, and that is our uh, four downs, as brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spas. And first, I want to go with safety dance. What down is it, Coop? Coop here. First down. All right. Reports concerning freshman defensive back Boo Carter have been incredibly positive, and that's coming from people I talk to within the program. I'm not going to be surprised if he starts a strong safety as a freshman. Jacoby Thomas, who transferred from Middle Tennessee State, has proven he can be a factor in the Vols defensive back rotation this fall, most likely at free safety. So I wonder if Tennessee's ahead of schedule in putting their secondary together, because I think there's a chance that they already have a direction, and that might be Carter and Thomas. Nothing's 100% now. We're just five days deep in the camp. But I think there's a chance that, that that's what they're looking at first. Yeah, I and, and that's something I think we predicted too. We thought that those two I'm would sure. end up being the starters. Um, and so I, I would agree that those are ever predict a freshman starter is kind of makes me feel naughty. Oh, Dave feels naughty. <laughs> no, I mean it's freshmen nine times out of ten don't contribute. I don't care how good they are. Dave, you naughty hooker, you okay, sorry. It's embarrassing myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I I think Jacoby Thomas was picked up specifically so he would fill that other safety void. I think they were hoping for Boo Carter. Now I'm going to say this: I've covered this coaching staff enough. They 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 have ideas of who they want to fill voids before practice starts, and they give those that they give those players every chance in the world to fill that void. Is that fair to say, Dave? Yes. Like, yeah. They. I don't think. I'm just going to say this and you guys can, and, and people can criticize me for this, but I don't think Josh Heupel's practices are run fairly. I think Josh Heupel has favorites before he starts practice. And then he tries to make his favorites win the starting jobs. And I think, well, I mean, all, all practices are more contrived than you would think. I, I, there have been times that I know for a fact that Tennessee named their captains and that's not who the players voted for. The coaches just took their vote, didn't tell them what the vote was, and just changed it. Yeah. So, I mean, practice is being contrived, and I think the spring games are often contrived to make somebody look good. I will go ahead and tell you that Nico Ia Maliava will throw for 5 million yards in the spring game. Guaranteed. What down is it, Coop? Cooper Mays here. Second down. All right. Who will play guard? So, you got this Andre Curicat. You bring in, you're excited. He's going to be a starter on the offensive line in 2023. That didn't happen until there was an injury in which he was able to play a bit and start a bit. Now you come into this season and he's banged up and he's limited in spring practice. Listen, I'm not knocking a guy if he's hurt, but at some point he's going to lose his opportunity. Now, right now, what I've been told is it will be Carrig on the left and then Javante Spragans at the right guard position. Spragans, of course, is out with an injury, but that's who it's that's who they would like for it to be. Lampley, eh, probably not physically there yet. Maybe won't ever be. Look he's for guys like fire guy. How is he not physically there yet? <laughs> he's just not that athletically gifted. Like you or me. I mean, you could give you or me 15 years and we would. Yeah, be that, that's not a there yet. That's just a not there. That's that's not that guy. Um, yeah. I think a guy like Vice and Lang needs to be ready. You know, they say don't get ready. Stay ready. If he stays ready, I wouldn't be surprised if he saw some significant playing time or push for a job. Because you've got to be frustrated with Keurig, even if he's legitimately hurt, and I don't ever want to question it an injury. What down? Cooper Mays here. Where will Dante Thornton play? We've discussed this before. He's got the body of an outside receiver. He's got the skills of both slot X and Y. So he can play whatever you want him to. 
but it's just where you want him and where he's the best fit. They tried to shoehorn him in at slot. I wouldn't be surprised if he's outside, especially if Squirrel White comes ready to play and he can play the slot position. But I'm interested to see where Dante Thornton plays. And I got a little respect for him after a really shaky start. He turned it around and he was playing well, and that's when he got hurt, and I hate that. Yeah, I think he's going to spend more time at wide out because I think they need Squirrel White in the slot. So I think I think we're seeing the rotation come together of what it's going to be. It's going to be Brew McCoy, Dante Thornton, and Squirrel White, which was what they wanted last year and didn't get. All right. So that was third down, fourth down, Coop. All SEC center Cooper Mays here, fourth down. All right. I can't leave this one out, can I? How will Nico do? Let's address the Nico situation and what I'm hearing. And I remind you that Four Downs is brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spas. Having the best spas made right here in the United States of America in your backyard. Dynasty Pools and Spas, their showroom is open in Athens right off the interstate. You can stop by and check out the best hot tubs and spas in the market. And then delivery, yes, they can do that. It's Knoxville or Chattanooga. They've got complete support, spa cover, and chemicals to keep your spa bubbling at its best. They also have pool chemicals as well. Dynasty Pools and Spas, amazing discounts for first responders, military, and even some blemish models. It can save you a ton, and no one will ever notice. Mention Off the Hook Sports, get $500 off. Mention Off the Hook Sports, get $500 off. Dynasty Pools and Spas. Go to DynastyPoolsAndSpas.com or stop by that showroom in Athens. DynastyPoolsAndSpas.com. Dynasty Pools and Spas. All right, before Nico, we talked about guards. Kalen says Lang, Vincent Lang, Bison Lang needs reps at center as well. We need Cooper as oh, we need a backup to Cooper. He is getting reps at center, and I think he'll eventually slide into that position once Cooper's gone. But I think for now he's a guard because they have to have him there. Now let's get to the Nico conversation. I, I, I hate to be boring, but everything I keep hearing is that he's doing everything he's supposed to. This coaching staff, I believe, is pushing him really hard to be a leader. And it's been evident by people I've talked to at practice that he is, you know, he he is, he is becoming that. In other words, he's visiting with someone after each and every play to maybe ask, "What did you see?" or "You need to do this." Or so he's assuming that leadership role, and it's probably forcing it a little bit. But he's a natural leader anyway, so I'm not concerned about. Nico Ia Maleava being a leader. It did it, it is it it's just in him. It's what he is. It's innate. Yeah, I saw the Moxie in him just in that citrus bowl. And you can tell when someone has it or not. And it's I, they may force it on him, but they're forcing it on forcing it on a guy who can be that. Unlike I've seen that happen before. You probably have too, Dave, where coaches tried to force a quiet guy to be a leader, and that never mm -hmm. works ever. I think Buzz Peterson one time sent CJ Watson to a leadership camp because he was tired of CJ Watson not being vocal enough in practice. And I'm like, you you, you can't do that. So yeah, I, I think that Nico is, that's that's really the big thing is spring is him just emerging as a leader and building rapport. I think he's fine. You're not going to see much. Look, I'm going to be honest. I think Hypo is going to keep it very reserved in the spring game. Hypo didn't want the spring game. Let's be honest. We know that. He didn't want the spring game. He would he would nuke that in a heartbeat if he could. He would. You're right. He would. Yeah. And then he was forced to. So... Of course, I also think that Josh Heupel would get rid of all the fans and the cheerleaders and, cheerleaders and everything and just play ball. I don't think he would care if it was just out in the middle of the field. I think he's that type of guy. Probably. he's a, he, he. Josh Heupel coaches for the same enjoyment that you get out of playing NCAA football, the video game. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much what he's in it for. Yep. Yep. And so, yeah, I, I think that you're not going to get much from the spring game with this. Hypel's just want to going to want to get it over with, and he's going to call it a day. He's going to give a press conference to say nothing, and you're not going to glean anything from Nico. But I think I think he might try to put on a show with his other quarterbacks in that game. You're going to see Gaston Moore just throw for 500 yards. Mm -hmm.